In this tutorial, I will cover the depth map presets in Double Exposure Generator. So, why would you need a depth map and what is it? Uh, we are going to make a depth map to activate the 3D effect in this template in case you are going to use your own photos as foreground. If you are going to use the previous scenes, uh, which are uh, pre-made, ready, then these already have the depth maps inside and you don't need to create any. But for using your own photo as foreground uh, with 3D effect, you need to make a depth map. And uh, that's why we have included these uh, presets to make your work easier and faster. And uh, I will show just how to use these. I have already imported my photo here and I took this from unsplash.com which is a great resource for photos and uh, we start with uh, opening this first composition in depth map presets folder so let's open this and I'll just drag my photo here inside and uh, now very important thing is to place and scale your uh, image before you start making the map uh, just as you want it to appear in double exposure scene later because if you make the adjustments after making the map then you have to make the map all over again so I'll we'll start with uh, changing the position here I will uh, use mainly the face part of this image and then we can go to second composition make map here and select the first layer controls and then you can see all the settings on effect controls panel here and if your effect controls panel is not open then go to window you can open it from here so the first uh, option uh, is map preview uh, options and here you can turn on the show full preview and then you can increase the opacity for this and this uh, uh, shows your uh, map uh, on top of the image so you can see how it uh, is placed and how well it matches uh, great way for working on the map and then you can turn off the show corner preview uh, which you may want to do in case your image is behind this uh, preview and you need to draw a mask on this part let's turn it on back and then you have the option uh, for uh, turning off text and this turns off uh, uh, the text in this uh, upper part which uh, tells which preset is currently active the next one is choose map preset and this is a drop down menu you can choose your preset one of the seven from here and I will show you just how these look so we have a, a front one which was active then the second is um, up looking person then a person looking down is next one then 90 to right is a side view uh, face to right 90 to left is a side view face to facing left and 45 degrees to the right next one and then the last one is 45 degrees to the left so we select this first one because our image uh, on our image uh, this woman is facing the camera straight so the front is the uh, appropriate one to use here these uh, next options we will go through later when we have started making our map and now I can go and select this uh, respective layer from here so for front mask I will use adjust front masks here layer and when you select this you can see the masks uh, on this layer let's take down this opacity so we can also see our image even better and um, the first thing is to press M to reveal the masks on this and then I can select all these by holding down shift and now press ctrl T or command uh, T on Mac <coughs> and we can now adjust these masks in one time to place them better on our face so we have a better starting point 
So we will change position of these masks and rotation and uh, scale it down also. Yeah, something like that. So now we can start adjusting the masks one by one. And the first one is face mask. This is the uh, oval of the face. Uh, for for starting with one mask, uh, put a lock on these other masks so you won't accidentally change these. And uh, you can for every mask you can add points or delete points, but it's better to use this handle on the um, points that are already there. But if you want to, you can delete and add points too. And we will just make some adjustments to this. And this um, upper part here, deep down this, something like that. Yeah. Okay. And then the next one is nose and I'll select this mask and make it fit our face here. So you get the idea, you just go mask by mask and make these fit to your portrait you are working on. And the next ones are lips and we can adjust these together again. So they fit approximately and then I can change some points for upper lip. And some points for lower lip. Like this. Now with the eyes, uh, when you are uh, selecting the eyes, then try to include area of eyelid also, not only the inner part of the eye. It will give you a better map then, like this, this also. Let's make the eyes bigger, yeah. So the last one is face eyes, and this is this green mask in the center of the face. Um, maybe it's a bit like here. And this, uh, using this mask is optional, so I'll show you how it uh, changes the overall mask. When we go to the first layer controls, you can see there's an option for use face highs, and you can turn it off from here. And then uh, the face appears to be more flat, and uh, I would use it in case your personal portrait has uh, stronger cheekbones or stronger face features then it helps to make a better map. So uh, we don't need to use it if you don't want to. And now we can see that we have made a map for the face, but we haven't uh, included any of the hat, uh, any of the hat or the hair. And uh, to include these, we have three layers available. So uh, foreground, middle ground and background. And these uh, three layers are where we create the masks so um, that will repre represent all these. So I'll just uh, start with background layer and you can draw up to 10 uh, masks for every uh, layer for these uh, foreground, middle ground, background layers. And uh, I'll just grab a part of the hat because the other part of it will be in foreground or middle ground, like this. And then when I press M or MM, I can change all the properties for the masks. And I can change the uh, feather, also opacity and expansion if you need to. Then we will go to the middle ground and um, here I will include some of the hair and this hair covering her face and part of the hat 
uh, part of the hat too. Like this. Um, actually. Yeah, like that. And now uh, again pressing MM reveals mask properties and I can also use the uh, mask feather tool to to make it um, to make the map, map better and more precise so you can see it updating here and we need to take this back definitely so it won't cover her face like that okay that's better maybe this one in and yeah and now the foreground we will put this part of the hat So for every layer up to 10 masks, press MM again, I'll uh, make the feather bigger and maybe some, no, maybe smaller and then also change the, the mask feather from here, bigger here. Okay. Yeah, that feather tool is sometimes really a, you know what, but it's just a matter of patience and tweaking. So, um, okay, let's make this bigger bit. Take down. Mm -hmm. And now, uh, when we have made our map, uh, all the layers, and uh, just did the masks, and then we can go to third composition here, this test depth map here. I'll open this uh, and select the first layer again. And uh, here, select the 3D effect on effect controllers panel. And you can now, using the selection tool, uh, drag around this um, controller which gives you the 3D effect. And you can turn off the controller um, if it bothers you, you can't see the image uh, properly or you can uh, change the controller color in case your image is blue and you mm, won't see it otherwise. And uh, you can here check check if your map is working uh, as you want it to. So just by dragging it around and then I can also um, create a keyframe and then go to the uh, two seconds in time or something like that and then uh, create another keyframe with a different movement so I can check how it works, uh, uh, the 3D effect. And um, you don't have to worry about these uh, edge artifacts, if there are any, because these won't, uh, like here, because these won't uh, show up in final scene in double exposure. So you can make also a RAM preview if you have made any keyframes here to the controller to see if it animates, uh, if it looks natural uh, with your portrait. And uh, if you don't like the uh, effect, then obviously you need to make some adjustments uh, uh, to the map. Just go back here. And now I would, uh, without even checking, I would say that we, we can make some changes here. So let's go to these uh, map options on controls layer. And you can see here, you can turn off the foreground, middle ground and background objects and uh, also this face highs option 
And then you have a note where it says that minus 100 is back and plus 100 is front. And this is to explain that uh, you can change the uh, distance from camera for different layers. So, for example, uh, for foreground, I want this to be uh, more uh, far, farther away from camera. I would take the depth value down. And then I want to have the middle ground objects also more like uh, in the foreground. So I'll take this value up. And uh, looking at these sliders, you can get a good idea what is the distance from camera as the camera is here on plus side. And the middle ground objects need even more to be in the foreground because this hair part is in front of the face. And then there is an option for middle ground placement here. You can take this also behind face map, depending what your areas are. If it's behind the face, then select this and you don't have to mask it out so precisely. But we have it in front of the face map, like this. And then uh, you can take the background depth, with the, which is black right now, uh, to be closer to the camera, so the effect won't be so harsh between the portrait and the background. Uh, okay, and I'll also take the background depth closer. It's too dark right now. Yeah, something more like this, perhaps even more. Something like that. So, okay. Now, when you have uh, tested your map and you are satisfied with the result, then you can render it out because you need to import it into the project to be able to use this 3D effect. And before rendering, you need to do two steps. So uh, first one is to take the map preview, the full preview opacity to 100. So it covers your uh, composition. Uh, you don't have to worry about these texts and the uh, small preview because these are only guide layers. So just uh, take uh, up this map preview to 100, turn off your photo and go to composition, add to render queue. And uh, you only need one frame as it is. Uh, set the settings for PNG sequence from here. OK, and then save it to somewhere where you can find it later. So name it according to the image you are using or uh, according to the scene you are going to use this scene, something like that. And press um, save and then render. And then you're ready. So in case uh, you get stuck with your map making or need some advice. You are always welcome to contact us uh, for help and uh, we will do our best to help you out. And in the next tutorial, uh, we will look at how we are going to use this depth map to create the 3D effect for double exposure. And one more thing I want to show you is that uh, with this composition here, you can also use it without the double exposure effect just to make the 3D portraits. You can uh, make your animation here, turn off this controller. Um, okay, and, uh, and you can render uh, out your uh, animation from here. Or then, if you have these uh, edge artifacts, I would just drag this composition into new composition. And you see the controller is not visible, as we want. And uh, then you can uh, scale this up just a few percent, so it uh, covers the edges. And then you can render uh, your animation from here. Okay, so thank you for listening and uh, watching and uh, bye.